Hey, it's Lee Halliday, and I've got a little uh, video to show you today. And um, if you were on Twitter or the internet at all yesterday and you're into React, you probably saw that the next version of React is going to have something new called hooks. So I wanted to produce a quick video that just shows you how you can start using them. Um, they're obviously just in alpha right now, but it's fun to play around with them. And we're going to refactor a component with some state um, to use hooks instead. So let's take a look. I've got this little app here, and it's, it's meant to be part of a larger app, so this is just the beginning of it. But basically it's got a form where you can enter in a GitHub token, and then it will eventually pull uh, your starred repositories down from using the GraphQL API. So it's got a little form. You can enter that in, and it will save your token in uh, session storage so that when you refresh the page, you don't have to retype it in every time. Let's take a look at how that's done then. So first thing to note in this little app is that uh, it's a Create React app, but I've bumped up the React and React DOM versions to Next so that I can have access to the alpha features. And then let's take a look at the app component. So you come in here, it is a class-based component which has some state, namely just the token that I talked about. So we're going to use some of the, um, the lifecycle functions here inside of our, our class component. Component did mount. And that's so that when I load the page for the, for the first time after I've previously entered in my token, it will set the token state from session storage. So we'll just say session storage.getItem and we'll grab the token so that the user doesn't have to re-enter it every time. We've got another function here called set token, which receives the token and it does two things with it. It puts that token into session storage so that it's there for the next time you load the page. And it also updates the state right here. So down in our render function, we grab the token from state, and then right now it's a very, it's the start of the app, as I mentioned. So it just returns a div with an H1. And if it has a token, we just show that token. Eventually this is where we put more logic to, to make a GraphQL query using this token. But for now it is what it is. Otherwise, meaning we don't have a token, we use the token form and we pass along the set token function that the form can call when, when the user enters that token into the form. So we just take a quick look at this. Um, it is a, also a class-based component, which has a form. Um, it's got one input here with a ref on it so that I can grab the, the value from it. And when you hit enter, which submits the form, it's going to call the onSubmit event function. And then what we do here is um, prevent the actual form from submitting using event.preventDefault. We grab that set token function that was passed down from the app right here. And then after grabbing the token value from the input ref, um, as long as they entered one, we will call that set token function passing the token up, which if you remember back here, token arrives, it gets put in session storage, and then it, that gets put into state as well. So if I just come into here and I, uh, remove my session storage, clear it out, refresh, it's not here. I enter it in and I hit enter to submit the form. It's now in here as many times as I refresh. So let's refactor this quickly from a class-based component to a functional component. And um, previously, if you had a functional component, you weren't really able to use state with it because there was nowhere to put that state. Uh, so typically you'd use functional components um, more of like a pure component style where all they do is receive some props and uh, render some something to display some state passed down from its parent. But now we can use functional components which essentially have their own state. So what we're going to do is eventually we'll just delete this whole thing but we'll keep it here for now. We're going to export default function and we'll call it the same thing, app. And it's freaking out a little bit because I have two export defaults, but we'll clean that up. So the first thing we want to do is we do want some state. 
uh, with a token value. So what we'll use instead is a new hook called useState. So useState, um, when you call it, the first time this app function is called, it's going to call useState, and what you pass into the useState function should be the initial value that it's have that it has. So it's like up here where we set it to null, but then later in component did mount, um, we set it to the session storage token value here. So what we can do above is actually just grab this little line here and put it here. So that the first time it loads, it's going to grab the token from session storage and use that as its initial value. And what this returns is an array of two things, but we can use destructuring to, to strip those out. So the first thing in this array will be whatever is returned in, and stored in this state property. So we're, we're storing the token here, so we'll call this token. The second thing it returns is a function very similar to this set token function here, where whenever you call it and you pass it a value, it's going to put that value into the state. So we will call that set token. So you don't need to define this function anywhere. It gets defined and returned by use state. Okay. So now I've got the token and I can simply return this code here. So I've got token, which came from use state. If it's there, I show the token. Otherwise, I render the token form. But just keep an eye here. Um, we're not in a class anymore, so there's no longer this. It's just a, a local variable from here. So I just remove that. OK. So let me just comment that out. And we'll see if it works. OK, it seems to be working. It's uh, loading from session storage. It's putting the, the variable here and the function here. And uh, everything looks to be good. So next thing we need to cover is, well, what happens when we set the token? We don't just want to put it in state. We also want to do something else. We want it to have some other effect. Um, and in our case, the effect is that we want to put the token also into session storage. So for that, you can use another hook that is provided in the next version of React called useEffect. And essentially, what useEffect is, is it's almost like a component did mount. Um, and it will get called once sort of every time that this code re-renders because of a state change. So what we do is we call useEffect. Just put some extra spacing here. And you give it uh, a function. So we'll just pass an arrow function here. And what we want to do in our arrow function is take this token that's in state and write it to session storage. So now that I've essentially recreated all of this class-based component using a functional component and the new two uh, hook functions provided in React, uh, we can chop off component here since we're not using that anymore and clean up our code below. And we'll just make sure it's working. So once again, I'm just going to clear out my session storage so I can re-enter this. So I refresh this. It doesn't have it anymore. I enter it in, submit the form, and now it's here. And this is how you go from having a component with a class-based component with state and switch that up to a functional component using the new hook functions provided in the the next version of React, which if you're watching this in the future, I believe it will be React version 16.7, which is now in alpha. Cool, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm sure we're going to find many different ways to use these hooks. I've seen stuff coming down from, from uh, Michael who created uh, MobX and Immer and some of the other um, uh, people that have open source libraries. So I feel like it's gonna be used anywhere and it's probably gonna make integrating things like MobX or Redux or even routers like uh, Reach Router a lot easier. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.